basketball fans. Welcome to the Fox Valley Association Conference. I'm Dave Preston along with Mike Pfeiffer to bring you all the play-by-play action here tonight as the final Cardinals play host to the Rockets of Nita. And Mike, uh, well, in all reality, a very, very key basketball game here tonight for the Fond du Lac Cardinals because uh, a win here tonight locks up an undisputed conference championship uh, for Fond du Lac. They have uh, the championship in hand, of course. They have at least clinched a tie for the championship. A win tonight, however, and it is all theirs. More importantly, the, uh, the Cardinals are on the verge of something that uh, I don't know if any Fond du Lac high school basketball team has ever done, to my recollection, and that is to go undefeated in the regular season. Well, they are certainly well on their way to that, Dave. Only three more efforts yet, and they'll have that perfect season uh, heading into tournament play. Uh, you you got to look at uh, incentives, and they very similar to what we talked about last night when we did the Fond du Lac girls. Uh, emotionally, they've got to stay up. They've got to be really focused on each individual game uh, heading into tournament play, and again, they, like the girls, have the same uh, process in mind, and that's an undefeated season at, at heart. They, if they want that, they have to keep in mind, they have to go out each and every game, and, and you can't start looking too much ahead at the tournament play. The Nina Rockets uh, did give the Final Act Cardinals a, a bit of a scare, if you want to call it that, uh, up at their their home arena. Nina, uh, kind of a disappointing uh, five and seven in conference play right now, and a team that at the beginning of the season was picked to challenge the Fond du Lac Cardinals this year for the conference championship. Uh, they, along with uh, Appleton West, it has not worked out that way for the Rockets. Uh, quite frankly, they have played very well on their home court and have not fared very well on the, uh, the visiting court. I think they've only lost two games at home, and I don't think they've won more than one or two on the road, as a matter of fact. Um, it has been a... Uh, uh, Obviously a very uh, tough season for Tim Hoffensberger, um, but a basketball team here that I think is, is really very dangerous. They're not going anywhere as far as the conference race is concerned, and right now what they're doing is getting tuned up for tournament. Well, they start looking ahead, Dave, and that's exactly what they're doing. But when you start talking about the Nina Rockets, you have to look at a key word uh, in that program. That's tradition. Nina perennially one of the top teams over the years in the state of Wisconsin in basketball. And they just, when they take the court, uh, more often than not, just feel that they can win. Uh, of course, uh, one problem for this, them this year is a new transitional coaching staff. Uh, Ron Anderson gone, no longer there. Uh, the dean of coaches in the state of Wisconsin had such a great career up at Nina over the years. Uh, so for a new head coach, it's a, a tough year, a transition year. But of course, as I said, we've got a lot of uh, uh, years of experience behind him in that area. Mike, the uh, Cardinals' last outing a week ago on uh, Saturday night was a real barn burner. Traveled up to Oshkosh West, a team that had, uh, uh, was not expected really to give them an awful lot of trouble. But uh, holy cow, uh, 102 points and held uh, Oshkosh West to just 53 in that basketball game. Quite the outing for the Fond du Lac Cardinals in particular for Adam Zinkus, who came up with 32 points in that basketball game, a career high for him. Well, it was the uh, second time this year, Dave, that they've gone to the 102 mark, which is a school record. And there's no doubt we know this team can put some points on the board in a big hurry. When they decide they want to play some transition basketball, they're up and down the court. You get Zinkus in the open court, as we've talked all season long, that's where he's at his best. But the, the real key for the Fond du Lac Cardinals as we start thinking about tournament play is going to be their defensive effort. Uh, they've got a lot of good defensive ball players. They play very well. But that's the aspect of the game they must focus on game in and game out. All righty, we're going to be back here with the opening lineups. A bit more chit-chat before the start of tonight's contest right after this on your Fond du Lac Cardinal Basketball Report. Enjoy shopping. Let me tell you about my day. I wake up, kickstart the body, activate the kids, do coffee with a hubster, haul recyclables, limo the tiny mites to school, go to the job, work too much, spend lunch balancing my budget, work an hour longer than I want, get home, return the sitter, return me, orchestrate dinner, sing a Barney song, check homework, chase a hamster, kiss the hubster, wrestle the tykes to sleep, zip out for PTO, zip back, administer emergency laundry reduction, and doze off to a mystic bird song tape, which does not ease my mind, on which is a weekend of such scope that I'm hoping Colin Powell will help with the strategy. Do I enjoy shopping? Look, 
If in one place you can help me save money, get real quality, and make a lot of smart choices in a reasonable amount of time, then yes, I guess you could say I'd enjoy that. You can make it happen? Good. Now, uh, would you enjoy driving some charming children to school tomorrow? Shop like you mean it at Forest Mall, a Simon managed property. Cardinals come into this basketball game. They are uh, led by um, uh, Ryan Eklund, averaging a little over 16 points per basketball game. Just to give you uh, some team stats on this team, offensively, uh, Nina averaging just 62.3 points per ball game, and Fond du Lac giving up an average yield of 55.8. Nina defensively uh, giving up an average of 61.1. So there's the reason why they're five and seven, or about 500. They're just right on the borderline as far as the uh, averages are concerned. Well, they've done that uh, through the course of the season, David. Talk about Eklund. He's a good young player, uh, 6'3", and plays very well. He's their scoring machine. And we're going to be right back with the starting lineups for both teams right after this on your Fun Black Cardinal Basketball Report. The Fondy Sports Complex, fun for the entire family. The Fondy Sports Complex is open from mid-April to mid-October and has activities such as go-karting, mini-golf, baseball, bumper boats, and much more. To plan your picnic or gathering for next summer, call 872-2688. The Fondy Sports Complex. Fox Diamond Center is proud to sponsor this telecast. We invite you to visit us at Forest Mall where we offer in-store expert jewelry and watch repair, free engraving and gift wrapping of your purchases, layaway and more. Fox Diamond Center in Forest Mall always brings you top quality for the lowest price. Your hometown independent family jeweler. Team uniforms, gym suits, bowling shirts, whatever your sport, shop Team Sports. Team Sports across from Veterans Park on Main Street in Fond du Lac. Visit The Athlete's Foot for brands you'll like at prices you'll love. The Athlete's Foot, athletic wear, shoes, and more. Forest Mall, Fond du Lac. This telecast is brought to you in part by Consultants Laboratory of Wisconsin Incorporated. Consultants Laboratory is Fond du Lac's full-service medical reference laboratory. Consultants Laboratory providing trustworthy service from three convenient Fond du Lac locations. Nothing adds beauty and value like tile from Fond du Lac Mosaic Tile. For your home or for your business, get the look and feel you want from Fond du Lac Mosaic Tile. Quality is just a phone call away. Call for your free estimate today. Fond du Lac Mosaic Tile, North Hickory Street, Fond du Lac. Dana Rockets returning to the floor in front of a jam-packed uh, house here tonight. And... Uh, of course, Mike, this has traditionally been a uh, quite a rivalry uh, between Fond du Lac and Nina. And obviously, the Fond du Lac Cardinals have had the upper hand uh, for the last number of years. It was not always that way. Uh, as you said, the, the great tradition of uh, the Nina Rockets, uh, at one time one of the powerhouse teams in the state of Wisconsin. Uh, the program certainly has not fallen off. I think what has happened is uh, the talent surrounding the Nina Rockets has probably just gotten that much better, and everybody got sick and tired of being throttled by these guys, and everybody else picked it up a notch. Well, the basketball, I think, has really gotten tougher over the years, Dave. I think every year the athletes get better and bigger and stronger and quicker and all the, all the uh, great uh, adjectives you can use to describe athletes. And, and uh, for, it's definitely the case for the Fond du Lac area. They have really gotten uh, the program going. But the, you know what you've really got to attribute the tradition to in, in, in winning at the high school level is the youth programs. And we talk about those early in the season and they really promote those youth camps. And I think a lot of credit's got to go to those young coaches over there that uh, work time and time again with these young athletes uh, at the grade school level to make them uh, high school all-stars. You were, uh, and uh, I, I got to remember to get this out of the way because we made a comment uh, during the gals basketball game last night that the Fond du Lac uh, Cardinal gals certainly were not a shoe in to make the state basketball tournament because they would more than likely run into the Manitowoc shipbuilders in the sectional semifinals. And Manitowoc uh, with just one loss as the same with the same case with the Fondy gals. Um, 
And I made the comment that the, the toughest part about that is that that game is going to be played at Manitowoc. And you were kind of hit with the fact that no, that sectional is at Menasha. Wrong. The sectional is the Menasha sectional. But the two split. semifinals this year are split because Menasha, uh, they, they were just so overwhelmed here the last uh, couple of years that they just have not been able to handle the crowd. So they have split that, uh, the sectional semifinals. I don't like it. I think that the sectional should be played all in one place. I don't like the fact that the Final Act Cardinal boys, uh, if and when we get there, are going to have to go to Manitowoc before we go to Oshkosh North this year, and that the Coff uh, Fieldhouse is not available. But the gals will play if they get to the sectionals. The semifinal game is in Manitowoc and not in Manasseh. The and final game would be in The final Manasha. game would be in Manasseh, correct. correct. Let's uh, go down. And... Uh, pick up the starting lineups of tonight's game. First of all, for the Nina Rockets, non-starters include number 11, Andy Hippus. Number 15, Steve Kohler. Number 21, Chris Yarbrough. Number 31, Matt Peppercorn. Number 33, Norm Kukuk. Number 43, Brock Baker. Number 45, Rob Ebert. Number 51, Tim Evans. Number 53, Justin McQueen. Number 55, Anthony Abraham. And number 13, Jed Keyes. Not starters for the Cardinals. Number three, Jeff Simon. Number 12, Brad Fester. Number 20, Jason Higgins. Number 21, Greg Fivey. Number 24, Scott Vandenberg. Number 25, Travis Ernst. Number 32, Aaron Chase. Number 33, Matt Rupert. Number 34, Eric Weissenden. Number 44, Scott Marshall. Injured and unable to participate tonight, Josh Harpson. Starters for tonight's ball game, for Nina, 5'10", Jr., number 5, Casey Brown. For the Cardinals, a 6'5", Sr., number 4, Eric Grams. For Nina, 6'3", Sr., number 23, Ryan Eklund. For Fond du Lac, a 6'1", Sr., number 5, Adam Zinkus. For the Rockets, a 6'1", Jr., number 25, Kurt Kramer. For Fond du Lac, a 5'10", Sr., number 10, Rocky Brown. For Nina, a 6'4", Sr., number 35, Jason Calloway. For Fond du Lac, a 6'1", Sr., number 13, Shane O'Loughlin. For Nina, a 6'5", Sr., number 41, Jed Miller. For Fond du Lac, a 6'9", Jr., double zero, Joe Harpson. <laughs> Nina is coached by Mr. Ted Hoppensberger. Fond du Lac is coached by Dick Diener, assisted by Bill Vandezandy, Roger Springborn, Marty Craig, and Mr. Ken Laced. And they keep trying to tell me, Mike, that we don't need a second person down in the van to uh, handle <laughs> duties on the character. Yeah, right. right yeah. Huh? Uh, Double duty is what we need. Yeah. Does not work out, folks. Uh, about ready for tip off here. And Cardinals in their home white uniforms, the Nina Rockets in their traveling red uniforms. Cardinals will be moving left to right on your television screen. As High Harmson, double zero, will step right to the top of the Cardinal at center court. High slam and jam are ready to go in on the center jump here with Jed Miller, 6'5", senior. And this basketball game gets underway, but Nina comes off of there with it, and a running one-hander taken there by Jason Calloway. No, tap once, and Slamma Jamma goes up to get, and the Cardinals, with a rather auspicious start, were really uh, <laughs> caught off guard on that one, weren't they? They're so used to coming away with the opening tap that it's not even funny. And they did not there. Shane Laughlin with a new number tonight, changing from number two to number 13 here this evening. It's all Laughlin, Zakis. Well, 
he thought he had golden grabs off in the corner to the near side and on a look away pass throws it out of bounds. Grabs in all reality was moving towards the hoop. And up court comes Casey Brown, senior 5'10 guard. Round to the right side is Ryan Eklund, leading scorer there. As they come in with a turnaround jump shot, is Bill. Don't follow it. And they might have called this one on Callaway, I believe. Zinkus with a good rebound position is hammered as he goes up to greet the ball. Jason Callaway will pick up his first personal. It'll be the first team foul. And the Cardinals, no pressure applied. And I, I tell you, that's very unusual for a Nina team to not want to press. Well, I think that's probably a good choice if you're playing the final at Cardinals. Turn around here by Slamajama in the outside the lane, no. And the Rockets cleared away. The backup court, Casey Brown. Casey looks down low, all alone underneath is Jason Callaway to lay it in. Callaway gets the inside position on the baseline. Harmson trying to come from the backside, but unable to get there. And the Rocket. Swing between the two rings, Adam Zakis back to Rocky once again. Had lost the handle on the basketball. Picked off of uh, the floor there by Jed Miller. Out ahead they come, Casey Brown into the paint here now. Shot of the way by Miller, no. Up over the top is Callaway, tapped it. And they'll say that it came off of the hand of Golden Grams. Got a Golden Grams sign in the stands, Mike. Yep. Tell me those nicknames don't stick, huh? You see it right there. Outside, shot on the way by Kurt Kramer is good. And Nina has jumped out to a 4-0 lead on the final lot Cardinals. Rocket. Here's Zekas out of the near side corner. I said the Cardinals need to win this one, and they will clinch a undisputed conference championship. Adam for three. Shot won't drop. Rebound to Eklund. Here come the Rockets. Casey Brown to the right side, sidewalk. Works down, and uh, he took the baseline away from Adam Zakis, and he'll lay it in. And Adam's about to get a tongue lashing from Mike Pfeiffer. <laughs> Do I cut you loose or not? Yeah, that's that. Get your seatbelt back on there, guy. <laughs> Rocky Brown. Olaf and post up here to Grams, takes it down the lane, bump, bang, no foul, call, and he honeycombed it in. Well, I was about to play and say in that series, you know, that was typically the way they normally start a game on. They usually go to Grams at a high post and usually slide Harmson inside to go to the double post, high, low post for that first bucket. They hadn't shown that yet today in three positions down court. Man-to-man -man defense, Casey Brown with uh Adam Zakis on him. Jed Miller gets the basketball. 15 for the left side, no. O'Loughlin out of there with the, with the board. Here come the Cardinals on the run. Right down the lane, O'Loughlin, no. Foul out ahead of the shot. And it will be a common foul. Ryan Eklund picks up the personal, his first, the second team. And so the Cards will inbound, trailing it here by four. It's six to two. So they'll uh, swing it out. Hole high here is Grams. Comes to Zekas, trying away. Good by Adam. Now Dick changed uh, Shana Laughlin's number here tonight. It's got to be all fouled up because the order now is not oh, the same. Same, right. And you kind of get to, you know, where you know right where to go with these stats. And today it's different. And a three there. Top two pointer by Ryan Eklund. Oddly enough, in this game early, the Rockets with nine shots in the field, the Cardinals with but four, and that's usually reverse for most Cardinal games. Zegas, post up Grams. They're gonna call this offensive. Block nope. foul on Casey, uh, Casey Brown. Uh, Brown uh, never got an established position there. Grams uh, got him with the shoulder a little hard. However, the position was never established. I'll tell you something, Mike. That was a tough call. I credit the official on that one because I, I I'll tell you, uh, probably 90% of the officials would not have seen it that way. They would have called it an offensive foul. Well, basically, Just from the acting job that was done by Casey Brown, and Eric Rams is fouled as he goes to the hoop. Well, I think the difference, Dave, there is that uh, the man that uh, got the foul, Casey Brown, stands at 5'10". Now, Grams caught him, but Grams being that much higher, caught him up the shoulder. If Grams is going against a bigger man at that point, he's going to catch up that shoulder at a lower point, which is going to make it appear as though he's leaning into it or pushing into him. Golden goes to the free throw line. He's a 71.4% free throw shooter on the season. And he gets the first. Yeah. Eric now three points in the basketball game. And Pondelac back to within two at eight to six. Cardinal hockey team a winner in a 
Twilight Contest tonight. <laughs> Started at 4.30, a makeup game that was originally scheduled to be played at uh, Sun Prairie, got moved up here, and uh, they beat McFarland this afternoon, 10 to three. Conference has already been with him. Here's Callaway, as he kind of took uh, Eric Gramps to school there. Callaway blows right by him, and he picks up his fourth point of the game, and it's 10-7. Jackknife jumper, Rocky Brown, off the front of the rim, no, and a foul underneath. On Slamma Jamma, yep. High Harmson will get his first personal. That is the first team foul. Cardinal hockey team will be right back to the ice tomorrow evening as we'll have that game with the Middleton Cardinals. And Middle, Middleton, uh, Middleton on Thursday night, Mike, was upset by Monona Grove. And well, so the Cardinals... That's a, a slight upset, Dave. That's not a real major upset. Well, it's an upset, though. Yeah, uh, Monona Grove uh, hasn't played as well later in the year as it did early, but right. the, uh, played very well early in the season. Jackknife jumper here is good by Kurt Kramer. And I tell you, Nina's hot. They lead it by five at 12, so... Yeah, they've just hit on uh, five of the last six shots in the field. Rocket. As the Rockets, the Rockets here, have gone to a zone defense. Yeah, three, Sakis outside, out of the coffin corner, shot won't drop. Rebound away to Kramer. Here they come back down, three on two. Casey Brown running one hander is good. And Dick Tina wants timeout. Boy, you haven't seen this happen too often. Nope. We're going to get a timeout on the court. Nina has jumped out to a 14 7 lead on the final of Cardinals. Back after this. Incorporated. Whether it's projects like BCI Burke or St. Paul's Lutheran School, Capelli Brothers and Dietrich are the general contractors Fond du Lac County has looked to since 1950. Capelli Brothers and Dietrich, North Hickory Street in Fond du Lac. For the finest custom cabinetry, call Classic Kitchens. Classic Kitchens has the quality and beauty of wood mode, fine custom cabinetry for any room in your home. Call for your free estimate or visit our unique kitchen and bath showroom. Classic Kitchens, Highways 23 and 41, Fond du Lac. Kemper Securities wishes the best of luck to all our local athletes. Call Kemper Securities for expert service for your next investment. Kemper Securities, members of the New York Stock Exchange, located at 66 South Main Street in Fond du Lac. Well, as you mentioned, Dave, this very unfamiliar site right here to see the Cardinals uh, take this early timeout, showing it at 14 to seven on the home court. Well, I'll tell you, it's the first uh, time here at home that Dick Diener has been forced to take a timeout early in the basketball game. Brad Vester has come in for Shane Olafwood. There he is, uh, Adam Zakis takes the baseline, dumps it back out for Bessie coming to the lane, and a foul. This one uh, away from the ball, so it's gonna be a common foul. Well, they call this on Eklund? Yes, they did. Ryan Eklund has just picked up his second personal foul, so that could be kind of key. Bessler will go to the stripe to shoot a pair. Brad, on the season, a 75% free throw shooter, 75.0, and he rimmed this one off. Well, Mike, uh, Nina had a number of leads on the Fond du Lac Cardinals when they played up at Armstrong High back in December. Well, you can expect it there a little bit more because uh, Armstrong, again, one of those places on the road that's extremely tough to play. Gets one out of the two, and it's a 14-8 basketball game. Trey from Eklund is good. Oh, yeah, that was a major league train. That was well behind the three-point line. 17-8. They lead it by nine. Rocky Brown. Pulls up hole high, round on the near side to Zekas. Give it to uh, the Rocket. Comes in, put the lights up on the way. In out, hoop wouldn't have it. And Abraham up to get it. Anthony Abraham. Outlet pass comes to Casey Brown. Casey Brown as he blows by Zekas again, winning one hander. No, Slam and Jamma can't get. Abraham does. Back to the hoop and he put it in. I told you this team had absolutely nothing to lose. And. Uh, 
was a dangerous basketball team, and you can start to see why. And they have an 11-point lead on the Fond du Lac Cardinals, yeah, the, undefeated and ranked number two in the state. Cardinals. And Nita's have, saying, who the heck is that? Yeah, the Cardinals have to readjust the offense here a little bit, take another look at it. Uh, they're playing a 3-2 zone, have been very effective, with the, effective thus far. Slam a jam up on the offensive board, can't hit it. Tap once, tap twice. Sakis reloads it, double pumping, no. Slam a jam with a tap, bango! Boy, finally. Bonilac into double digits. It's 19 to 10. And back up court comes Casey Brown. Take it down on the baseline. Kurt Kramer, a 10-footer is good. But as you said, Dave, they're red hot right now. That's the, the real key. You have to turn on the defense to try to shut them down. Bester. To Rocky Brown, out of the near side, Golden Gramps, 21-10 basketball game. Rocket pump oh, back up. Yep. Well, so far, just about whatever can go wrong has gone wrong. And for the Rockets, it's been a perfect game. They've shot very well. They have not turned the ball over one time in this game. And they've uh, done a good job on the rebounds. Simon is going to check back in, check in for the Cardinals, along with Greg Fivey, the first action for those two young men. Well, I'm surprised that they get uh, Harmson out at this time. I tell you, he, well, maybe that's what they want to talk to him about is say, see the way you battled on the offensive boards that last time up court. We want to see that all the time. Abraham, travel, travel with the ball. First turnover of the game for the Rackets. Now into the basketball game is Norm Cookuck. And here and comes Eklund. Eklund will come out. He's got two fouls. And I'm sure that they want to uh, keep him away from a third here in the first quarter. Brad Bester out on the left side. He traveled and got away with it. Jeff Simon, as they try to come up high post, five, he was moving away from the basketball, picked off the floor by Kurt Kramer. Cardinals have really had trouble against this zone defense. Outside, jackknife jumper airballed there by Cookock, and the rebound pulled by Bester, and he is fouled on a reach in by Cookock. We haven't shot the ball very well here in the first quarter, and of course, when you're playing against his own defense, uh, you'd like to be able to shoot the ball from the outside. It's the best way to crack it. Still a common foul. That is the sixth team. Cardinals will go to the bonus on the next need of foul. So they inbound on the near side. Jeff Simon rips it out between the two rings here is Bester, yo-yo's the dribble. Give it to Adam Sakis. Right side, sidewalk, takes it down to the baseline, pulls up 10 for there. It's good by Adam. His second bucket of the game, 21 to 12. Still by nine, the Nina Rockets and Casey Brown works on Sundance in the backcourt. Brown gets a pick from Abraham. High off the glass, no, Jeff Simon clears it. Here come the Cardinals on the run. Jeff Simon looking for the good shot. Give it to Zakis. Pulls up 12 for in the way. Off the front of the rim. Tapped by Fivey. No, and they're going to call him on the foul. I think it'll be Graham's name. No, no, no you're right. Big Fivey. But seven seconds left here in the first quarter of action. JV's had a, a key ball game here tonight. Um, Really, uh, one game, uh, or one game or tied uh, back from Apple and East, and uh, kind of got blown away here tonight. Shot on the way, no, and that's going to be the end of the first quarter of action. And our score, after one quarter of play, it's the Nina Rockets 21 and the Fond du Lac Cardinals 12. We'll be back after this on your Fond du Lac Cardinal basketball report. Thousands on your next vehicle purchase? Todd Motors. Don't believe it? Shop and compare. Todd sells cars for less. We're the working man's friend. Find us at 400 South Military Road. Todd Motor Company, the home of fine cars. American Family Insurance would like to remind you that the most important reason for choosing an insurance agent is service when you really need it. Dennis Gutman and Lyle Birschbach have over 32 combined years of serving the insurance needs of Fond du Lac area families. Find us at 3D4 North Main Street in Fond du Lac. Well, I'm, uh, don't like to do this 
uh, down in the van. Uh, obviously, this monitor thing either is turned on down in the van or whatever. Uh, make sure you've got our monitor cranked up so you can hear us. Because we've been trying to talk to you in between uh, timeouts and quarters and not getting a response. Eric Grant, here is a Harpson turn around and the paint is good. Joe Harpson, his second bucket of the game. 21 14 within seven once again. Pressure applied in the backcourt as Casey Brown works here on Jeff Simon. Brown, near side. Pull up here by Kramer, blocked by Sakis. Rebound, though, taken down by Miller. Back outside, Casey Brown airballed uh, Trey. Out of bounds, back to the Cardinals. And in case the uh, monitor thing's not working yet, we need a white balance on the floor camera. So, back up court. Here is uh, Adam Zinkas, looping feed. Here is Harmson off of the baseline, can't hit the shot. Rebound taken down there by Jason Callaway. Outlet pass. Back out, and Casey Brown back up. Callaway. Coffin corner here to the right side. Working out hole high now. Jed Miller tipped away by Harmson, but into the hands of Callaway, and he'll lay it in. Well, that's what you know if things are going right for you. The ball is being loose, but it comes right to Callaway on the inside position, able to put it up for an easy back bucket. Nine-point lead once again for the Nina Rockets with 6.48 remaining here in the first half of action. And once again, they're playing a 3-2 zone, setting up in that and sliding the, the defense on the wings down. Trey on away from Brad Bister, bang -o! And that Trey, as you may have seen, was about three feet behind the arc. Shows you what that extended defense can do. It forces you way outside. 23-17, though, back to within six. Ted Miller, and trouble with the ball. Real quickly, let me give you a first quarter stats here. The Cardinals only four for 13 for 31%, including one for four shooting from the three-point range. The Rockets, 10 for 19, 53%, including one for two, one for two from long range. Each team with six. Hi, Slava Jabba! Each team with six rebounds, the Cardinals with four turnovers, and the Rockets with one. 23 to 19, back to within four. Casey Brown to Callaway, high off the glass, intimidated by Slamajama, and Grabs clears it. Here is Jeff Simon, left side. Adam Zink is coming off in the lane, leaning in 15 footer, back of the rim. No, Harps it up to get, and a foul. Oh, they're going to call him. I don't believe that one. Oh, okay. Jed Miller. All right. Jed it goes Miller. the other way. It's yeah. on Jed Miller, yeah. I thought they were going to call that one a moment for on uh, High Slam and Jamma, but no. And right here, Tim Hoffensberger wants a timeout. 5.46 remain to be played here in the first half of action. Timeout on the court. Cardinals trailing it here at 23 to 19. Vice President of American Bank Loan Department welcomes your business anytime to help you get the home that is right for you. American thinking of financing your home. Since 1933, Spee's Painting and Decorating has been providing quality painting services for all your industrial, commercial, and residential needs. If your job is big or small, get it done efficiently and get it done right the first time. Spee's Painting and Decorating, equipped to do the job efficiently. For complete insurance services, call your independent agent serving the Fond du Lac area. Call Insurance Agency, where service is the key. Our staff of knowledgeable professionals is ready to serve all your insurance needs. Call us for a quote at 923-4020. Call Insurance Agency, North Main Street in Fond du Lac. Well, not one of uh, Joe Harmson's fortes here, the free throw line. He is shooting, but 43% uh, on the season, but he knocks down the first one. Yeah, that certainly looked pretty easy. And now a substitution of the ball game. Jed Miller is going to come out, and Anthony Abraham is back in for the Nina Rockets. Slam a jamma can draw the Cardinals to within two. And they missed it. But the rebound to Golden Grams. Bump, bang, and lane now leaves it outside for Simon on the way. Honeycomb out. Grams with the rebound. Double pump, bang. Won't drop. 
Hudson has, and the paint got. Boy, that was some offensive board work there. Well, you saw the guy in the middle of most of it was Graham's, uh, you know, Mr. Blue, a blue-collar worker inside. And a reach-in foul be called here on Jeff Simon. First personal, fourth team foul. Common foul. And once again, the Rockets will inbound the basketball. Token pressure here in the backcourt as Casey Brown works it up on Jeff Simon. Gets a pick there from Callaway, works through it. Down to the right side, brings it back out. It is Kramer. Here's Eklund, dribbled it off his knee, got away with it. Running one hander is good by Eklund. Well, that was a tough shot. That was a, a cue ball right there with as much English as you could possibly put on it. But it looks like a big two in the scorebook. That's right. Left side, here's Bester, off the front of the rim, no. Grand Hearts and I he missed the no-footer. High slam and jam with a great offensive board, but he missed the no-footer. And it's 25-22 by three, Nina. With a chance to extend it, Eklund traveled. <laughs> well, I'll tell you something, I don't think he did too much to travel with the ball right there. He did more the last time down court. Actually, a little and, bumping and banging by yeah, Bester. I, I thought I, the whistles would come on Brad. I think that might have uh, may have been a little bit of a makeup call there. Well, back up court come the Cardinals. Rocky Brown tipped away by Tony Abraham. Up for it, up court lead feed here for Eklund, and he'll lay it down. Well, one of the few times that last time Rocky Brown really uh, telegraphed that pass to Harmson coming across the middle. Doesn't usually do that. Very uh, deceptive passer. Here's Zakis. Leaves it here for Golden Grunts, and he'll lay it in. Well, Grant moves without the Always moving without the ball. Off of the baseline, shot there by Callaway, no. And the rebound away to Eric Grant's. Outlet pass to Zakis on the run. Coming up free throw line, leaves it extended here now for Brad Bester as Grams comes down in the lane and Abraham with a block <laughs> and a blocking foul. And Grams never even flinched. You were asking about Ron Anderson. Oh, there he is. Here's the uh, young gentleman right up behind us, as a matter of fact. Eric Grams is going to go to the fifth line, shooting, as I said before, 71% on the free, on the season. He is two for two thus far, and will shoot a one plus one, and again, can draw the Cardinals to within one. Gets the first. Golden now with uh, seven points thus far on the night. 3.47 remaining here in the first half of action. Final act has trailed it from the opening tip-off. They have now cut it back to within one. The closest they've been since that opening tip-off. Yeah, they've cut it to one now twice and have not gotten over the hump. If you remember, Eklund came back and uh, buried that uh, goofy shot, that cue ball shot right after the last time we closed within one. Anthony Abraham takes Traveled. the baseline and travel with the ball. Oh, They're going to call ball. a foul on high Slamma Jamma. And Slamma Jamma has just picked up his second. And if Dick Diener holds true to the norm here, you would think uh, Fivey might uh, be in Fivey now. Fivey would be coming back in. And he is. Slamma Jamma to the Pines, and Greg Fivey is back into the basketball game. So, up high post, Abraham, bump bang on the young sophomore, leaves it off of the baseline. Kurt Kramer there with a 12-footer no, foul underneath. And they're gonna, they get Eklund on this? They might have gotten Eklund on a foul here, and they did. That's his third. Eklund has just picked up his third personal. Ryan Eklund with his third personal, and quickly back up off the pines is Norm Cookock. And Eklund is probably more valuable to the Rockets than any one player is to the Cardinals. Yeah, I, I would say uh, if you take the loss on fouls here with him picking up his third, uh, we've got Joe Harmson to the Pines with two. And I'm not saying that Slamma Jam is not a valuable player. That's not the, at all the point. Uh, 
But I think the Cardinals can get by a lot easier without a high slam a jam on the Dina Kid without Eckler. Well, the, the, the real key is the Cardinals with sim, so many more weapons. Uh, the Rockets really offensively do not have that many weapons. They really need Eklund. Brad Bester getting the first, and he has tied the score, and the Cardinals have their first lead of the basketball game at 28 to 27. Casey Brown. As they come down to the baseline, Kurt Kramer, the ball slapped free, but Cook picks it off the court. Leads for Jed Miller, coming into the paint here now. Anthony Abraham there with a shot, no. Double pumping in the lane. Once again, it's Cook will put it back in. And the lead now, Seesaws back, and a tray on the way there by Bester won't go. Abraham with the rebound. Outlet pass to Casey Brown, quickly back up court they come. Casey Brown is played by Rocky Brown. Swing between the two rings to the near side. Cook to Brown to Cook He is played by Zekas. Leave it for Miller. Right side, Casey Brown turned down the tray. Reloads the basketball to Kramer. Up high post now they come to Jed Miller. Miller now going to shoot it over the top of Grabs. Back to Sophomore Fivey up to grab the rebound. Outlet pass to the Rocket. Lopes right of the basketball, brings it up high behind the back feet here. <laughs> oh, what a nice pass on a look away from, old, from Golden Grams, and Greg Fivey gets his first bucket of the game. Yeah, nice pass, and then Fivey finishes it off on a good fadeaway from about four feet out. Just a, a simple drop back, but he put it off the court, looking away. And final leg leads it again at 30 to 29. Back door feet, they come, blocked by Brad Bester. And the basketball will go back to the Rockets. Uh, Bester comes and makes up defensively. I think it was Zakis that turned his head on the ball and uh, lost his man momentarily, and that's where they got backdoor play. And Anthony Abraham will come out. Tim Evans, a 6'4 senior forward, is into the ball game now for Nina. We're at number 51, and they threw it away. Uh, Mike, uh, I don't know if you've noticed it, but the, the thing I've noticed is a sudden lack of continuity by the Nina Rockets ever since uh, Eklund went, went out of the basketball game. Well, that fully expected. They, they really need him in there. But boy, what a drop in the, the entire uh, continuity of the team. Rams up hole high here. They get a double up on him. And now swings it off left side. Here's Brad Bester. And trying to come to the back door feet. Brad saves for Ooh. OB. And they threw it off the leg of Jed Miller. Not a bound. Yep. So the basketball is going to go back to the Fond du Lac Cards. Well, the Cardinals, after being down big early, have rallied, got back to a one-point edge. And again, I think this is a good thing for the Cardinals. They need to experience these type of things before tournament play starts. Boy, this is a new look for me, too, to see a Nina team playing a zone defense. Mm. And they've been that way the bulk of the game. Zakas, Brown to the near side. Brad Bester, flash five, he threw. Can't get him the basketball. Reloaded, Zakas down near corner again on the skip pass. Here's Bester, 12 for the way. Brad Bester. Brad, with great extension, really gets off the ground. Uh, holds up on that 14-footer. Squares up great. Just under a minute remaining here in the first half of action. The final act lead is three at 32 to 29. Miller. Outside the key, Miller gets it back once again. Give it to Evans, round to the right side. Casey Brown, Evans, as the ball tipped out of bounds, touched last by Golden Grand. 41 seconds to go here in the first half. Cardinals with a three-point edge at 32-29. And the Rockets inbounding underneath their own hoop. Looping feet outside it is Cookhuck. As they post up, Jet Miller running with Hainers Cook. Ah, that's a tough play right there. Uh, that was just a, a real perfect post up and the, the postman immediately sliding down. And Final Act gonna look for one here with 24 seconds remaining in the first half. Rocky Brown waiting for Casey Brown to come up. And now looking to go here, clock down. And Adam Zakis takes the baseline, dumps it uh -huh. for Golden Bango! Great execution. Half court shot, no. And that will be the end of the first half of action. And our score here at halftime, the Fondelac Cardinals 34, the Nita Rockets 31. We'll be back after this on your Fondelac Cardinal basketball report.
TV. At Silica, you can choose from a large selection of full-size and compact camcorders from names like Canon, Sharp, Quasar, and RCA. So remember the excitement of the moment with a camcorder from Silica Appliance and TV. Join the Baker team and be a first stringer. Try the Baker brand award-winning string cheese. Any way you tear it, it's terrific. In your lunches, on your next trip, as a dietary snack. Our string cheese is great anytime. Find all our top quality Baker cheese at most area stores. For your next movie or game rental, visit Video Biz. Video Biz offers free membership and free reservations. Receive fast, friendly service and choose from a huge variety of videos and games with plenty of copies of your favorite selections. Video Biz, locally owned and operated in the Pioneer Plaza, Fond du Lac. For all types of commercial printing, call the print shop. Get fast, courteous service and quality print all your business needs. We specialize in multicolor printing. Call 923-435 or visit our office at 19 East Street in Fond du Lac. Back at halftime, Eagles with a three-point lead. One. And I'm privileged once again to provide to us the Fond du Lac Rich Pom Pom Squad. Provided courtesy of the Final Act of Rich Pom Pom Squad. As always, a wonderful job. I'll be right back with a quick look at the first half stats right after this on your Final Act Cardinal Basketball Report. The Fun Esports Complex, fun for the entire family. The Fun Esports Complex is open from mid-April to mid-October and has activities such as go-karting, mini-golf, baseball, bumper boats, and much more. To plan your picnic or gathering for next summer, call 872-2688. The Fun Esports Complex. Fox Diamond Center is proud to sponsor this telecast. We invite you to visit us at Forest Mall, where we offer in-store expert jewelry and watch repair, free engraving and gift wrapping of your purchases, layaway and more. Fox Diamond Center in Forest Mall always brings you top quality for the lowest price. Your hometown independent family jeweler. Welcome back to Gibbage High. Halftime it is. The Cardinals with a three-point edge at 34 to 31. Take a quick look at the first half stats here for the Carolina Cardinals, first of all. They are 12 for 28 for 43% from the field. The Nita Rockets, 15 for 30 and even 50%. The Cardinals, 8 for 10 at the charity stripe for 80% real fine free throw shooting. Nita has, have they attempted a field goal? Free throw, they're 0 for 0 from the uh, free throw line. The Cardinals on the edge on the boards at 13 to nine. Five first half turnovers for the Cardinals, only four for the Rockets. So each two team doing a very good job of taking care of the basketball. I forgot to tell Nancy you can't be over for the line and still shoot 100%. Oh well. Had me confused. Take a quick look at the scoring here, Dave. Well, the leaders uh, for the Final Act Cardinals for our scoring. Eric Graham leading the way with 10. Nine points for Slamma Jamma thus far. Brad Vester has eight. 
and Adam Sakis with five. For the Nina Rockets, led here uh, thus far by Ryan Eklund, who has nine points in the basketball game. But keep in mind that he is saddled with three personal fouls. Kramer and Callaway both with six, and Jed Miller has two. So we get ready to, and we do start the second half of action. And Casey Brown has the ball knocked away and out of bounds by Rocky Brown. So the Rockets working on the near court here now to us at any rate. And they come to Eklund. Ryan Eklund off of the baseline. 14 foot of the area airballed it. Golden grabs with the rebound. Outlet pass to Brown. Up court, Adam Sakas spins down on the baseline. Turn around jumper there. No. Slamma jam up to get the hook is good by high slamma jamma. Wow, nice reverse pivot by Harms and uh, goes first towards the left side and turns around, gets the side saddle and the sky hook. Out of the coffin corner here now to the near side. And uh, coming off in the lane is Kurt Kramer off the back of the rim. No, Grams clears it again. Eric Grams sweeping the boards. And dishes off to Rocky Brown. Give it to Eric, back hole high. Near side, here is a Shana Laughlin for a tray and he hit it. 39 to 31, Fond du Lac out to an eight point lead to start the second half. Cardinals in the first half with just two for seven from three point land. Tripping and ball. they're gonna call a uh, trip here on Rocky Brown. Well, wrong place at the wrong time is all that amounts to. You know, uh, a foul there that you really don't like to see called, Mike, I'll tell you why, because Rocky Brown really didn't move from his position. And you're allowed to have your vertical plane, and Casey Brown trips over him. Trips over his feet, and I guess you, you got to have your feet someplace. That's right. So a foul there that probably should not be called. You're, you're not, you, you don't have to move to get out of the way. And Callaway had that one blocked, and here is Adam Sakis back up court, and they called Eklund on a foul. Oh, my. Ryan Eklund has just picked up his fourth. And that spells... Big time trouble for the Rockets. And I'll be very honest with you folks, I don't know what he did to get it. There was a lot of traffic there, and I don't know how you, uh, uh, there were three red jerseys there, how they picked Eklund out on the foul, I don't know. And they're gonna, well, now they're gonna change their minds. Why did they leave him in this long? Cardinals would be wise to go right after him right here. Zakas, here's Rocky Brown. Takes it inside the lane and a 15 footer is good. Well, quite frankly, Dave, I think the way this game is going right now, the Cardinals have opened this up to a 10-point lead. I leave them in. Off of the baseline, air ball, slam a jam a has. Outlet pass, Rocky Brown dumps it up court here. As they try to slide it in to Golden Grams, and it's tipped away. Jed Miller brings it back up. They are going to get him out, though, Mike. I think I, that yeah, uh, Cook is up. Yeah, he's up. Uh, I don't think I would do that. Free the line extended jumper by Jed Miller is good. First field goal for the Rockets in the quarter on some six attempts. 41 to 33. Rocky Brown. Swing between the two rings. Post up in the lane. Graham skips it down here. Harmson fall away jumper. He traveled. They don't call. Out the pass from Callaway goes to Casey Brown. Casey Brown coming around to pick out high. Bump bang there by Eklund. No. And now they're going to call a reach in foul on Rocky Brown. And Rocky has had a, a, a pair of pretty tough calls whistled against him. Yeah, Rocky right there, just going for a loose ball, and more often than not, you're going to get the whistle just because you're the defensive player in that position. And Eklund now is going to check out in the ball game. Well, I was surprised that uh, Rocky Brown will come out after picking up his third. Uh, the surprise to me there, Mike, is that if you're going to take him out, why did they leave him in as long as they did? I mean, I, I would have... If you're gonna pull him, I would have pulled him right away. <laughs> they took a heck of a chance on following him out of the game uh, completely I, there. I, as I said, I wouldn't have pulled him, period, because the Cardinals are starting to walk away with this game a little bit at this point, and they need Eklund in there. Outside, Jed Miller shot there, will not drop. Rebound tipped into the hands of Jeff Simon. The only thing is, though, Mike, that the Cardinals certainly would have gone over and just attacked that side constantly. Well, it's not going to do you any good to have him at the end of the game when you're down by 20. And high slam and jamma goes down and lays it in. Joe Harmson, his 13th point of the ball game, and the Rockets want another timeout. We have 5:01 remaining here in the third quarter of action. A timeout of the court. Fond du Lac now leads it at 43 to 33.
whatever your sport, shop Team Sports. Team Sports across from Veterans Park on Main Street in Fond du Lac. Visit the Athlete's Foot for brands you'll like at prices you'll love. The Athlete's Foot, athletic wear, shoes and more. Forest Mall, Fond du Lac. This telecast is brought to you in part by Consultants Laboratory of Wisconsin Incorporated. Consultants Laboratory is Fond du Lac's full service medical reference laboratory. Consultants Laboratory providing trustworthy service from three convenient Fond du Lac locations. Well, I, I agree with you, Mike. Um, I, I guess the problem that I would have with uh, not taking him out at least for a while uh, is that if you do follow him out here yet in the third quarter, what does it do uh, emotionally to your basketball team? I don't know. Well, I, I think if I've got a, one player I rely on that much, I want to get all of them that I can get out of him. Like I said, you can save him for the fourth quarter, but if you're down by 18 points to start it, it's not going to make much difference. Post up in the lane here to Jed Miller, and he turns around and hits the 14-foot jumper, 43-35. I think you got to get it down a little further, though, to where he feels that he can come back and play in an offensive foul. Going to no. be called on Eric Graham. No. Nope, you're right. They're yeah, going to call the blocking foul. Yep. yep, he got there late. It'll be before the shot. And it's going to go on Cookhook. Second personal, second team. Second team foul. O'Laughlin. Back out hole high to Eric Grams to Shane O'Laughlin. Outside here, Zakis now with a trail away. Good. Well, set up by a good skip pass from O'Laughlin across court. Against that zone defense, what you want to do is move that ball across the perimeter as quick as possible. And the best means to do that is a skip pass. Out hole high, uh, Callaway comes for Kurt Kramer. You know, ironically, Mike, the Cardinals, uh, when you look at the three-point shooting statistics, are shooting the lowest percentage of any team in the Fox Valley Association. And uh, Jed Miller, coming alive here, has scored six points now in the quarter. And that, that statistic, of course, is a, so extremely misleading, it's not even funny. Zake this again for a trade. Bye, go! Yeah, tell me about it. 27%. Yeah, but, but as you said, it's so misleading because the Cardinals have had such big leads that you've had a lot right. of people on the bench shooting a shooting lot of, a lot of threes. threes. You betcha. And uh, Trey on the way here from Kukuk won't go. Grands with the rebound. Outlet pass to Jeff Simon. Here come the Cardinals back up. Leading it now at 49-37. And a spin move into the lane here by St. Laughlin, though, and a foul. Boy, Grams there again to crash the boards. And this one will be called on Callaway, his third personal, the third team. Perfect example, Dave, why you don't play basketball games on paper. Uh, if you were to scout this team via the paper route, you'd say, let's give them threes all day long. Yeah. And if that's the case, then the starting unit or the first five or six or seven ball players, they're going to bury you with those threes most games. Shane Laughlin is going to go to the free throw line and shoot a pair. He's a 75 free throw shooter on the season. So I've got some uh, bad news. Uh, for folks around here as well. The state basketball tournament, both the guys and the gals, normally uh, you can see it, uh, well, up until, uh, what, last year or two years ago was on Channel 32, which, of course, is off the air. And then they moved it over to Channel 26 and really didn't carry all of it, but you could pick it up on Channel 18 as Laughlin hits one and misses the second. And we're going to get a substitute, uh, sub substitute free throw here. Um, Channel 18 this year out of Milwaukee for whatever reason, and I, I, I just find this so hard to believe, is not going to carry the state high school basketball tournament. None of it. So consequently, the bad news is that uh, as far as live TV is concerned, you're not going to see the state high school basketball tournament. The good news is that uh, Star Cablevision, we at Star Cablevision have made the arrangements with the WIAA, and uh, as long as you got cable, you're going to get the state high school basketball tournaments, as well as the championship game of the hockey tournament. And a sky hook in the lane here by Anthony Abraham is good. Uh, Star Cable will be picking up the quarterfinals and semifinal rounds on Thursday and Friday, then the championship rounds on both of those tournaments, and a lean in here by Brad Besser won't drop.
Ball banged free by Bess off the rebound. And however, picked up again by Casey Brown. Uh, the Thursday Friday games will be on our channel 8, I believe it's going to be on. We'll let you know for sure later. Lean in here by Jed Miller underneath, and he put it in. And the championships on uh, on the Saturdays, uh, both both Saturdays for the guys and the gals, will be shown on WBAY TV 2 out of Green Bay. Now uh, they're picking it back up once again. The oddball thing of all this is that uh, channel 32, I guess, by this time was supposed to have been back on the air and had actually contracted to carry the entire tournament. Here's a baseline jumper by High Slamma Jamma. His 15th point of the game. But uh, they're having some technical problems getting that station back on the air up there. And uh, consequently, of course, could not carry it. So we have called the WIAA and have made the necessary arrangements and You'll get the quarterfinal and semifinal rounds on our channel eight, and then the championships, of course, will be on live TV on WBAY. Best is gonna get the blocking fall inside. So that's the good news. Bad news and the good news. Those of you who live out uh, inside a cable range will have to buy a satellite dish, I guess. <laughs> well. You don't know you're hearing this anyway if you're outside of cable range. <laughs> yeah, you never know where they might be sitting right at this moment as far as that goes, <laughs> I guess. Bester there, that was his first personal and our third team foul. And now what do we have? Uh, There's a little discussion uh, or clarification, should I say, at the uh, coach for the coach of the Rackets. I don't know if he wanted to shoot free throws there or what. 53, 41. Got it down here to Abraham. Comes around. A high slam of Jemma, oh, a tough shot and went in. That yeah, was a tough shot, but right underneath the uh, arms and... So here's Adam Zakis, round to the right side, out to uh, hole high, Jeff Simon back of the rim, and a foul underneath, and they're gonna call this one on Shayna Lawful. I blow, no, it's gonna go the other way. It's gonna go on Casey Brown, I believe. No, no it's not, it's not Shayna Lawful. Yep. His first, team's fourth. The state uh, hockey championship will be on Saturday afternoon, March the 5th. State championship game only. The, just the state championship game. And I believe that that's a 1 p.m. or a 1.30 start. I'm not uh, really positive about that. Back up court with the basketball. Casey Brown down to the baseline. Running one-hander here again by Jed Brown. No, Zekas tries. It's knocked out of bounds. Back to the final line. And should the Final Life Boys hockey team make it there, the quarterfinals and semifinals, I would assume we'll, we'll have. have. We'll have. Yeah, we'll have that, yeah. Well, we are uh, working out arrangements to carry uh, everything, both the guys and the gals, one way or, or to other. We're, we're going to get something done there, folks, to be able to pick all this. Slamma Jamma! Oh, that's the second time tonight with the exclamation point by Harmson. I put an exclamation point behind both of them, too. And post up here to Travel. Abraham. Ooh, oh, no, no, that's not a good call that, at all. No. no. Nothing there at all. And Joe Harmson's going to be sent to the pines here once again. He's picked up his third with 57 seconds remaining. Uh, Joe not happy, and he's got every right to be a little unhappy on this call. There was one thing to whistle there. That was a travel and nothing else. Yep. Now I'll give... Anthony uh, Abraham, some credit. He has played very hard out here tonight, giving up an awful lot of size there to the big guy. And has had a battle on his hands and a reach in foul now on Adam Zakis. And my, have they called this thing ridiculously close. Well, I'll tell you, these officials have gotten an earful from both coaches. I've and they're, of course they're, the they're quickly gonna start getting an earful from the fans as well, Mike, because they're taking the ball game now away from the people who paid to come and see it too. And inside the paint, and a lean-in jumper there by Steve Kohler is good. And once again, back to a 10-point game, 55 to 45. And we have 40 seconds remaining in the quarter, oh, Eric. Oh, my! And we're going to get a foul now called on Anthony Abraham as he takes down Joe Harmson. Harmson was trying to put a third exclamation point in the stat chart. And Anthony Abraham, it, boy. You know, Mike, those are the type that are close to being called intentional. Uh, I wouldn't have called that intentional. No, but they're close. Well. 
Hi Harmson will go to the free throw line. He is one for two thus far. And with a total of 17 points on the night so far. 55-45 basketball game. And he missed the front half. Did we uh, tell you? I think we told you once. We'll tell you twice. We're going to have Cardinal hockey action on the air tomorrow night. They'll take on the Middleton Cardinals in the regular season finale. And a chance uh, with a victory in that game for the Cardinals to take over sole possession of second place. Of course, Wapon has won the Badgerland Conference for a second straight year. And congratulations to them and uh, Steve Lenz over there. Just a fine effort, fine hockey team. And Abraham here off the glass won't go down. Sakas with the rebound. But of course, as tournament play starts next weekend, they will have to face off against the Cardinals in the yep. first game, unfortunately. Well, that's going to make things very interesting. Here's Zekas down to seven seconds, free throw line, trying to dump it down low post, and uh, it's going to go back to Nino. Four seconds left. They'll have a quickie chance here to get a shot away. Yeah, that'll be next Saturday night, the 19th, and we'll have that one for you. And a lean-in half-court shot by Casey Brown, no good. And that will be the end of the third quarter of action. And our score here after three quarters of play, the Final Act Cardinals 55 and the Nina Rockets 45. Back after this on your Cardinal Basketball Report. beauty and value like tile from Fond du Lac Mosaic Tile. For your home or for your business, get the look and feel you want from Fond du Lac Mosaic Tile. Quality is just a phone call away. Call for your free estimate today. Fond du Lac Mosaic Tile, North Hickory Street, Fond du Lac. No one helps Fond du Lac County grow like Capelli Brothers and Dietrich Incorporated. Whether it's projects like BCI Burke or St. Paul's Lutheran School, Capelli Brothers and Dietrich are the general contractors Fond du Lac County has looked to since 1950. Capelli Brothers in Dietrich, North Hickory Street in Fond du Lac. As we take a quick look at the third quarter stats, the Cardinals in the third frame, red hot, 8 for 12, 67%. That includes 3 for 3 from three-point land. The Rockets, 7 for 16 for 44%. Cardinals double the Rockets on the boards, 8 to 4. Two turnovers for the Cards. The Rockets in the third quarter, however, go without a turnover and have committed but four in the game thus far. And final lag inbounding to start the fourth and final quarter of action. Jeff Simon comes for Rocket Brown as they'll leave it back out for Brad Bester once again. The three guards in the game here right now. And Jeff Simon down to the baseline, lost it off the foot and out of bounds. And as we close the quarters, to clarify uh, for your Ledger fans, if you heard, we will have the Wapan Fond du Lac game next Saturday, but we'll be a doubleheader. Yeah, we'll we will have that Springs Apple Springs Xavier, Apple game, Xavier yes. game also. That's correct. We have Ledger basketball action on Monday night from Menasha St. Mary's. Lean in here by Kurt Kramer is good. His eighth point of the ball game. And they're 55, back. 55 47, they're back with an eight. Kind of like uh, Oshkosh West was with the Fondy Gals last night. Just keep kind of hanging around. And Armson is tied up here by Callaway. Possession will go to Nina. Of course, our congratulations. Uh, we said it last night, but uh, we'll reiterate it once again. Our congratulations to Chuck Schutte and the Final Act Gals, led by Ann Claprick and a host of uh, real fine uh, gals there that have really become quite the machine. They have won, uh, see here now, Mike, what, 17 in a row, I believe? Something like that, their early season loss. Yeah. And the lean-in jumper here by Callaway from 14 is good. And here they come, they're knocking on the door again. Yeah, they're back six. within six. And they've done it without, well, Eklund is back in there right now, but really has not been that much of a factor right now. Rocky Brown. The Bester, slam a jam a turn, 12-footer, God! Hi, Hobson. Well, they have gone back to a man-to-man -man defense the last two times down court. You know, they have been for a little bit here. But there you, you post up Harmson on the low block, and you give him that position, he's got the height advantage. Free throw line jumper by Casey Brown. No, slam a jam up to rebound it. And back up court, Rocket down to the baseline. Golden grabs, shot was good, but they're gonna yeah, call for double, double dribble, dribble in the okay. basketball. Cardinals with three quick uh, turnovers here in the fourth quarter. 
And Adam Zinkus up off the pines. We'll check back in on the next whistle, and that'll be right now. That's going to be right now, yeah. 6 14 remaining. Eight point lead for the Fond du Lac Cardinals. The uh, Cardinals, uh, of course, are home again next week on Thursday night. We have a long week again next week, aren't we? I think we've got, I think we've got Monday, Tuesday. We no. might have, well, yes. Tuesday night, I believe, is Springs Hockey against Beaver Dam. That's a makeup game. I'm uh, not positive about that yet. Casey Brown outside Callaway. Fifth row line extended jumper there would knock it down. Rebound snatched out of the air by Brad Bester. Outlet pass to the Rocket. Rocky up court said a tray on the way here from Bester. God! Oh, that's a big shot. Bester is very two long trays tonight. 60, 49, 11 points spread once again for Fond du Lac. Casey Brown, left side. Tray on the way here is good by Kurt Kramer. Well, so he answers it. Yep, the neutralizer right there. Within eight again. Rocket. Comes off into the paint now, reloads back up between the two rings, and Nina is in the man-to-man -man defense here. As uh, spinning down to the right side is Adam Zakis. Bester swings, they get it down to the baseline. Eric Rams now free throw line jumper by uh, High Hansen, though, and Brad Bester is going to get a foul on the arm of Callaway. Bester with his second personal, and that will be the seventh team foul, and the Rockets will go to the line. Yeah, I, I believe that we've got a makeup hockey game on That's, Tuesday. I forgot night. about that one. Yeah. So that would make it Monday night, Tuesday night. We get to have off on Wednesday night, Thursday night high school basketball. Friday night, we don't know yet. Something. Well, possibly uh, gals basketball here against Kimberly. That's going to be a very big game, even though they have the conference championship wrapped up, and then of course the doubleheader on Saturday. <laughs> right. Callaway, got it. I used to. I think that March was mad this time. What's going on here? They're moving it up? Yeah, well, we're just getting ready for it, I guess. Callaway will get one more. And it is good. <laughs> 60, 54, back to within six once again. The Nina Rockets and all kinds of time to go in this ball game. Adam Zakis pulls up with a 12 footer It's good. Adam Zegas, his 13th point of the basketball game, averaging 15 points something on the season thus far. 15.9, yeah, almost 16 again. Left side, side walk Evans. Now they uh, post up here to Callaway. Boy, he had a rainbow that one over Slamma Jam and he put it in. Callaway coming on here in the fourth quarter. He's got six and they're back to within six again at 62 to 56. And to the baseline goes Adam Zakis and fouled by Kurt Kramer. They're gonna get Kramer or Callaway on this one. It will be on Kramer. Now that is only their fourth team foul, but this was a shooting foul, so Adam Zakis will go to the line, a 67% free throw shooter, and he'll shoot a pair here. Adam. 14 points on the night. Final act, uh, Mike, we were talking during the gals basketball game, not going to have as easy a route as uh, some people would think. The road to the state tournament, and I know uh, we probably shouldn't look that far ahead. You gotta still play the one game at a time thing. But now we're broadcasters. We don't yeah. have to worry about that <laughs> stuff, right? Outside, train the way here from Ryan Eklund is wow. And it's 64 59. They are within five. Eric Graham travel the ball. Boy, Boy in the quarter here, the Rockets are five for seven, including two three pointers in the quarter. Fond du Lac will open up tournament play on uh, Saturday afternoon. Is that going to be March the 5th? Yeah, the same time as the uh, state hockey championship. It will be an afternoon game against the winner of the Kakana Beaver Dam game. And look out become, because here come the Golden Beavers and probably the uh, premier guard in the state of Wisconsin. 
And you might remember him, Mike, when I believe he was a freshman and Beaver Dam was out here, the coach's son. Recall that? Well, uh, definite, definite D1 prospect. And uh, Adam Zakis with the personal here, his second. This will send Kurt Kramer to the free throw line. And a pair here with draw back to within three. Um, Beaver Dam has been in and out of the rankings basically all season long and has uh, kind of hung around that honorable mention stuff. They've only lost two games on the season. And they play in a conference where two other teams, Oconomowoc and Watertown, are both ranked. And they do have, uh, they, they doled out Watertown's uh, only defeat. So that is not going to be the easiest of tasks. And, the Cardinals now with a task at hand themselves. Right, we've they have allowed Nita right here. back into this basketball game as they trail it now by only three. Oh, Golden Grams right down Main Street and lays and it the off the And the bucket will be good. Boy, that was a lot of finesse as Grams right down Central Avenue and takes it on a little reverse layup off the back of the glass. And they're going to call the foul on Jed Miller, his second personal, 16. Biggest play of the game, and my son's hands were in the way. I to settle him down. Eric Grams is 12th point, and will try to complete the three-point play. 71% free throw shooter, and he gets it. Golden Grams, 13 on the night. And it's a six-point lead, just like that. Well, that was a big, big three-point play. Yeah, the Cardinals really needed the answer at that point. Excellent answers here with two. Eklund with 14, but keep in mind that he has sat out an awful lot of this basketball game. He, he probably has played less than half of it. He's played uh, about half of it on the bench is what he's done. Rocky Brown, near side, Adam Zink is 304 remaining. It is a four-point ball game at 67-63. Rocket, Bester to Zinkas, takes the ball down, pulls up with a 10-footer to the right side, and I believe Jed Miller got him. Yep, going to call it on Kurt Kramer. Kramer second. They are over the limit. This was a shooting foul anyway, and Adam Zinkas will go to the free throw line. Two for two thus far, and he'll shoot a pair here. Well, Dave, a sad day in Wisconsin for baseball fans, huh? That's yeah, I would, of Robin I would say I, I'm, I'm kind of mad at him. I, I, I wish he would have uh, let us know and, and kind of given everybody one last chance to, to go see him play, you know. Uh, but uh, this is very consistent yeah, with his nature. I hear you. Uh, but I, I'm a firm believer, Mike, that a, a player like that just shouldn't go out this way, you know? I, I don't... I don't know that we needed a farewell tour, <laughs> but uh, I think he should have gone ahead and played and said, uh, you know, when it got down to the last month of the season, said, hey, this is going to be my last year. Yep. Would have been nice. Ball bang free, picked off the court by Zinkas. Eklund's still on the court, and now what did they call? Oh. Eklund with a foul, and yeah, he's he just fouled out. Ryan Eklund's still on the court, and has just fouled out of the ball game. Well, he had kind of led this basketball team back to within three points. And with 2.44 remaining, he's all done. Uh, Robin Young, a class act, uh, just a wonderful person. I, I've always said if you had someone you want to admire as an athlete and pattern yourself after, he was definitely that type of person. Very fortunate that I've had um, several opportunities to uh, spend some time with him over his career, got to know him a little bit. Uh, as fine an athlete and the finest gentleman as you ever meet. Actually, you were fortunate that you knew uh, uh, Jimmy Gander yeah. as, as well as you did because that's the only reason you knew Robin Young, right? No doubt about that. Yeah. Eric and Grams now, will go to the line. He has hit on five of five here tonight. And after, quickly, within two years, the three amigos of Milwaukee are all gone. Yep. Huh? Yeah, that's all. Turn young. Golden. 
with 14 points on the night. Well, I tell you, Mike, you talk about a player who I think has really been, uh, they missed this one, a key factor since Josh Harmson went down. It is, you, you got the point at Golden. That's not a thought about it. I'll get to a point about that when we get a mixed break. I'll, I'll uh, ask you something here a little later. Off of the baseline, Jed Miller leaves it outside now for Cook on 224 remaining. The lead is seven. And uh, lean in by Kurt Kramer won't go and Golden up the stats out of the year. Mike, uh, I, I was told by a coach one time that uh, an MVP oh. had Adam Sakas with a lead in shot from 10 in the paint. And the foul. Well, right there you saw what Sakas is so adept at. He felt the pressure, felt the contact, and just threw it at the basket. That's what he did. He knew he was going to go to the free throw line. Threw it at the basket, got it to go down uh, between the strings, and he's got a three-point opportunity. Chad Miller with the foul. I was told by a coach, as a matter of fact, it was Dick Kennard, told me that a, an MVP of a basketball team should be the one player that you would most not want to go out and play a game without. And I tell you, I think you seriously have got to look at Eric Rams uh, in that regard. Interesting that you say that, Dave, because through the course of this game, I didn't want to bring it up for the flow of the game. Uh, I was really thinking about that very topic. And, and you've got a Cardinal team here with an awful lot of talent. Yep. I mean, you've got some great individual players on this team. And you talk about an Eric Grams who was not even a starter right. until Josh Graham, Josh uh, Harmson goes down. But you look at his contributions, his scoring, his rebounding, his assists, his team ability on the court. I'll tell you, he may be your MVP. Yeah, I, uh, you know, might go back to when uh, Josh was still playing and was not uh, before the injury back at the Christmas tournament. Uh, Eric Rams came in and did just such a tremendous job off of the bench. And, and uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm not going to speak for him and say that it didn't bother him to come off of the bench. I don't think he's the type of player that does, he'd want to start all the time. Rebound came off to Jed Miller. But, uh, and Rocky, they call Rocky for the foul? I yep. think so. And he's just fouled out. Rocky Brown has just fouled out of the game. Well, his demeanor, Dave, I'm talking about Eric Grams, uh, is that whatever the coach told him, I would expect that would be fine with him. Yep. Uh, he will do whatever. He, you talk about a Robin Yount. There's, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Very Eric quiet. Graham is really the Robin Yount of the Final Act Cardinal basketball team. And we are going to get a timeout taken here with two minutes and two seconds remaining to be played. No, and we're not well, going to be Okay, just the timeout to. 45 uh, seconds right. Down. Cheerleaders were going to go out. Uh, they thought the same as I did. Well, I guess that's the kind of the cue I took it from. Rocky. Here's the Rocky uh, just to the left of Coach Dick Diener looking on. As he, uh, well, actually to the right. Well, Dick's left. Oh, okay. Dick Diener's to the left. No, Dick's left. <laughs> Callaway. Shot won't drop. Adam Sinkus goes up and clears the board. Leave it to the backcourt for Jeff Simon. 156 remaining. It's a nine point lead for the Final Act Cardinals. Vester. Adam Zakins. Zakins coming off at the free throw line, and uh, they're going to call a foul. Yeah, they're going to call it on uh, Kirk Kramer, I yep. believe. Well, it looked like a pretty good swipe from the backside. <laughs> Not so sure that was much foul there either. But I was, uh, I always thought that that was an interesting uh, comment from from Dick Kennard, who, who said that the, the MVP of your uh, of your team is not necessarily the leading scorer. Or, so I think that's Whatever. a very it's, accurate uh, comment. It's, yeah, it's uh, that's the what guy I you would at least want to go into a basketball game missing or without, yep. Adam Zakins. I don't know if there's a guy on this Bonlec team that plays all facets of the game as well as uh, Eric Grams does. And I'm talking the ability to score, the ability to rebound, the ability to pass, as Eric has an awful lot of assists in a basketball game, uh, just to do it all. Yeah, they've got guys that can do different facets extremely well. Uh, but to do them all and do them all as quietly and as unemotionally as he does, not too many do. Callaway, 17-footer no. Slam a jam a tried, and then Callaway lost the handle of the basketball, and Sinkus is fouled by Cookup. So we'll go back to the free throw line again, and Adam Sinkus back to the line. He has hit on seven in a row here in the fourth quarter. 
And I suppose I just threw the old whammy jammy job on it. Well, the Cardinals have uh, virtually got this one wrapped up, although it's never over to the... Now we are going to get a timeout. Nina wants to talk it over with 1.36 remaining. Timeout on the court. Fond du Lac leads at 75-64. Call Classic Kitchens. Classic Kitchens has the quality and beauty of wood mode, fine custom cabinetry for any room in your home. Call for your free estimate or visit our unique kitchen and bath showroom. Classic Kitchens, Highways 23 and 41 Fond du Lac. Kemper Securities wishes the best of luck to all our local athletes. Call Kemper Securities for expert service for your next investment. Kemper Securities, members of the New York Stock Exchange, located at 66 South Main Street in Fond du Lac. Remind me that I got on the uh, radio station FM when we get out of here because uh, the Wisconsin Badger hockey team with a very key series this weekend. They are out at uh, Colorado College. For those of you who uh, haven't been aware of it, the, all the games of KFIZ FM uh, all season long, which is kind of nice. I like being able to uh, catch the red game. Yep. Well, they'll probably, if they, if they hold true to what they've been doing the bulk of the season, they'll win tonight and get blown away tomorrow. Yep. Like Fridays and not Saturdays. Yeah. Shouldn't say blown away. They don't get blown away on Saturday. They just manage to lose one goal games all the time. Zekas hits the first. Again, final at Cardinal Hockey tomorrow night against the Cardinals of Middleton. And um, was ranked, and I... Off the top of my head now, Mike, I forget uh, where they were ranked this week, but they oh, were ranked. Uh, middle of the pack, I think. Somebody yeah. There. But uh, they did drop a game the other night to Monona Grove, and now Fond du Lac can take sole possession of second place. Here's a Kurt Kramer now in the trail away. It's good. Well, they're going to shoot threes all night long and then foul the 122 remaining. Zake is looking low. Grant comes to Jeff Simon. Dance. Here's Eric Grant's going to take it to the hole, and he is fouled by Jed Miller. And that should be whistled before the shot. I believe the bonus. You're right. Jed Miller gets his fourth, and it will send Golden Grams to the free throw line. 14 points on the night. He has hit on six of seven, and he'll shoot a one plus one here. Any comments on the, as the Olympics are about to unfold, the Tanya Harding incident? Well, <laughs> You know, uh, a lot of people are got a, the pin case. A lot of people would probably jump all over me for this, but I'll, I'll tell you something. I think you got to let her go. Um, uh, she's been charged with absolutely nothing, and you, you can't. Well, she hasn't been charged with anything. If you're going to charge her with something, charge her with something. Let's get on with it here, okay? Uh, but she has not been charged with anything. And wouldn't you feel like a bobo if you told her she couldn't go and she was innocent? Um, well, Mike, it's, it is Mike, a, glad I brought that up. Yeah, well, it's a, <laughs> why? You thought I was going to say the other way around, right? Oh, I didn't know what you were going to say. Oh, Miller to the line here to shoot two. I listened to a talk show about this. Uh, I personally radio don't talk have show a, a couple of nights. Awful lot of use for her. Well, I hear you, but uh, on, the, on the same hand, you know, she's kind of the blue collar skin. You've just never seen one like her before. You're used to all these uh, petite gals that are quiet, don't say a whole heck of a lot. She's just a different breed all the way around. All the way around. Yeah. She's got an arrogance about her that well, I no, really... No doubt about that. I'll, I'll tell you this much, all the negative publicity. At, at one time, I believe that Nancy Kerrigan and uh, Harding were favored to finish 1-2. Uh, in the Winter Olympics. Now they're not even favored, either one of them, to win a medal, believe it or not. And that's what all the negative publicity has done in the skating world. I go back to the other end, and Adam Zakis again back to the first line. The unfortunate thing about it is that, uh, you know, we're about to kick it off here on Saturday evening, and uh, the only thing you even hear about going on is this incident. You know, I've heard a little bit about the hockey team. Uh, Very little. Yeah, well, they, they take on France Sunday afternoon, and... Um, they are in Pool B and are not with the Russians. Uh, 
The Russian team, by the way, is favored to win it. And with, uh, it's not the Czech team, it's a, a team that drive or came off of the uh, uh, Czechoslovakia that is favored to take second, with Canada finishing third and the USA fourth. But they are predicting that the USA will make the medal round. A tray here from Jed Miller, no. Rebound down and away to Zekas. Up court feed to Eric Rams, and he's fouled ahead of the, the uh, shot. Nice They're shot. Call this, yep. Zekas uh, gets the ball. And Finds Graham's uh, streaking down the end and uh, fires one over the shoulder to him. 79-69 by 10. Uh, what's going to be interesting to me, Mike, I think probably the, the neatest thing in this Olympics is uh, can Dan Jansen win a, win a gold? Uh, if every young man deserved to, win deserved to win one, he has just had such a series of bad luck that you would hope that this would be his year. Eric gets the first. And uh, also, can Bonnie Blair become the first woman ever to uh, win golds in, in uh, three straight Olympics? So that uh, I, I think those are probably a couple of pretty exciting things there. And also, we're supposed to have uh, the finest luge team. If you get into that, and I kind of do, I, I enjoy luge. Uh, outside, jackknife jump here by Cook. Hook a tray would knock it down. 47 seconds left. And another tray here by Kurt Kramer, and he hit it. And a timeout. Ah, we'll keep it here and chit chat for a while. I think we're okay with spots. 42 seconds remaining. 81 72. Um, uh, the, uh, the, the Luge World says to look out for the USA this year that they will probably take a medal, and uh, that would be very interesting as well. I uh, do not know what time that hockey game is being played or whether it will be uh, completely televised by CBS on Sunday or not, but I do know that the game is Sunday afternoon for those of you hockey fans. And if you were wondering what channels you got to watch for that, it's either uh, channel three, three or channel six. six. Yeah, right, three or six. Three being the uh, Green Bay. That's Sunday Cable Network, of course. Yeah. They had Channel 5 if you're working off an antenna, and then, of course, you wouldn't be listening to us. So. <laughs> That's your team. And once again, we have made arrangements with the WIAA to carry all of them. Uh, well, not all of them. We'll have the uh, quarterfinals and semifinals of the Gals and Guys State Basketball Tournament on the Star Cable System. Harmson across the timeline, 37 seconds. Well, he wanted to go to the free throw line. So everyone else is getting a chance to up the stats from the line here. A little bit, huh? And Joe could use some padding on the free throw stats. He is one for four here tonight. Chargers have only had six field goal attempts here in the fourth quarter, but uh, that's the bad news. The good news is they hit five out of six. Well, uh, ever since Eklund went out, Mike, the obvious strategy by Nina uh, has, has been to send the Cardinals to the free throw line. They, Probably wanted to foul Joe a little bit more than they have. Another tray on the way here, short in front of the rim from Cookock. And Grams now is fouled by Jed Miller. And Miller, according to my stats, is fouled out of the game. Yep. yep. So with 28 seconds remaining, Golden Graham's going to go to the free throw line. Has hit on 8 of 10 here tonight. As Tim Evans is back into the basketball game now. And the Cardinals will win their 18th straight game here tonight and go to 18 and 0. Certainly is not at all going to harm that Number two state ranking. Second one here by Golden, and he missed it. So here come the Rockets, trailing it by 10 at 82-72. Jackknife jumper here by Carlos Brown. Again, they hit the tray. Right there, it gave me team. And fouled in the backcourt is Zekas.
With 18 seconds left in the game. And a, what has been an eternity here yeah. the last uh, three minutes. Adam Zakas has shot 11 free throws here in the fourth quarter. And he is now tw hit on 12 out of 12. Got to say that now. I said it before after he oh. hit seven. I didn't yeah. whammy him. Okay, here it goes. Well, he deserves to be able to miss one here now. Ryan out loud. Eight seconds remaining. The lead is eight. Adam, see? You know. Nothing but that. You betcha. Clock to 15. Trey on the way from Cook Hook. In front of the rim, Bill. Tap around by Grants. Again, now to High Slam Ajama. Give it off to Jeff Simon. Quickly across the timeline. Grants running one hander. Oh, reverse left. And a golden guy. And he put it in. And that is going to be the end of the basketball game. And final score out here tonight is the Fond du Lac Cardinals 86 and the Nita Rockets 75. And we're going to be back right after this to wrap it up. 86-75, the Fond du Lac Cardinals win their 18th straight. And Mike, look at the congratulations here from the Nita coaching staff to the players of Fond du Lac as uh, they come off. Fond du Lac has wrapped up the undisputed conference championship of the Fox Valley Association. We'll be back to wrap it up for you right after this on your Fond du Lac Cardinal Basketball Report. Company, the home of fine cars. American Family Insurance would like to remind you that the most important reason for choosing an insurance agent is service when you really need it. Dennis Gutman and Lyle Birschbach have over 32 combined years of serving the insurance needs of Fond du Lac area families. Find us at 3D4 North Main Street in Fond du Lac. Vice President of American Bank Loan Department welcomes your business anytime to help you get the home that is right for you. American Bank, a welcome sign when you're thinking about financing your new home. Since 1933, Spee's Painting and Decorating has been providing quality painting services for all your industrial, commercial, and residential needs. If your job is big or small, get it done efficiently and get it done right the first time. Spee's Painting and Decorating, equipped to do the job efficiently. For complete insurance services, call your independent agent serving the Fond du Lac area. Call Insurance Agency, where service is the key. Our staff of knowledgeable professionals is ready to serve all your insurance needs. Call us for a quote at 923-4020. Call Insurance Agency, North Main Street in Fond du Lac. Remember the excitement of the moment with a camcorder from Silica Appliance and TV. At Silica, you can choose from a large selection of full-size and compact camcorders from names like Canon, Sharp, Quasar, and RCA. So remember the excitement of the moment with a camcorder from Silica Appliance and TV. Join the Baker team and be a first stringer. Try the Baker brand award-winning string cheese. Any way you tear it, it's terrific. In your lunches, on your next trip, as a dietary snack. Our string cheese is great anytime. Find all our top quality Baker cheese at most area stores. For your next movie or game rental, visit Video Biz. Video Biz offers free membership and free reservations. Receive fast, friendly service and choose from a huge variety of videos and games with plenty of copies of your favorite selections. Video Biz, locally owned and operated in the Pioneer Plaza, Fond du Lac. For all types of commercial printing, call the print shop. Get fast, courteous service and quality printing for all your business needs. We specialize in multicolor printing. Call 923-4354 or visit our new office at 19 East 3rd Street in Fond du Lac. Welcome back once again here to the Goodrich High School Gymnasium. Our final score here tonight, the Fond du Lac Cardinals have won the undisputed conference championship 
with an 86 to 75 victory out over the Rockets of Nina, a very gamey Nina Rocket team here tonight. Mike, who at one point this basketball team, uh, basketball game had a 12 point lead in the second quarter. Well, the Rockets kept coming back, coming back in this game. They made it to a three point game at one time uh, towards the end of the third quarter or early in the fourth quarter, really made an effort at it. Uh, they gave a lot of credit to this team. They kept battling, uh, kind of a blue collar team all the way around. Uh, not a lot of talent outside of Eklund. Uh, uh, not uh, flashy talent, maybe I should say, better way of putting it. Uh, they really impressed me down the stretch show how they didn't give up. They came back and uh, nailed about three or four threes in the fourth quarter, kept it uh, close until the Cardinals just kind of pulled away down the stretch. And, and uh, I think that's when the cream rises to the top. Uh, game when the Cardinals knew they had a uh, the, for whom the bell tolls and they went right there to uh, lock her up. Well Mike, I, I, they constantly were trading us two for uh, three for two, three for two uh, down the stretch. They hit uh, numerous three point shots down the stretch and of course would follow us. We went to the line, we did a very good job. Cardinals shot 78% uh, from the free throw line and Adam Sakas alone hit 13 straight in the fourth quarter. So uh, we certainly did the job from the free throw line out here tonight. But, uh, uh, you know, Final Act needed a game like this. Um, you know, especially after the relatively easy time that they had against a, a powerhouse team or what was supposed to be a challenging team uh, in uh, Appleton West. And we come out and have a relatively easy time in that basketball game. And then uh, last Saturday night, have an even easier time up at Oshkosh. Really needed a game like this uh, coming down the stretch. And, um, you know, it's it's for me anyway. Uh, maybe Dick here, Dick. Well, Dick can't get any more gray hairs, I guess. But um, and he certainly didn't get them from this team anyway. No, oh, <laughs> probably got him. Where was he coaching before this up north there? No, uh, but I, I think that Dick. Cool Cold fact. I think that, that Dick would probably have to be uh, pleased with the way that the, the, the Cardinal team uh, turned and came back in this basketball game here tonight. Well, I think it's a good experience for them to go down early and to show, excuse me, that they can battle back. They certainly did. Uh, they didn't uh, get rattled at all early when they were down by 12 uh, points in the first quarter of action. And they just came back. I think it shows that they have that uh, ability to rebound uh, uh, in a game. And a team like Nina, if you look at the stats in this game, Nina shoots 50% unofficially from the field, exactly 50%, and only turns the ball over five times. Now those are pretty good stats in a, in a game. Uh, you, turn, you shoot 50%, you turn the ball over five times in a game, uh, I'll bet you you're going to win a lot of ball games. And that wasn't the case for today. While we're at it, let's take a look at this. Take a look at the final stats, Dave. Uh, the Cardinals uh, are going to shoot 55% uh, from the field on 26 for 47 shooting. Uh, largely due to the fourth quarter when they were six for seven. Really uh, boost up their stat. But again, 31 for 62 for an even 50% for the Rockets. Look at that, they have uh, five more field goals than do the Cardinals in this game. But as you mentioned, the real key is the next uh, category, 28 free throws out of 36 for 78%. That's some great shooting. Only seven for nine, big disparity in the free throw line tonight. All for the Cardinals. The Cardinals at the edge on the boards, 29 to 18, 11 turnovers for the Cards. And the Rockets, as I mentioned, unofficially only five turnovers in this game do a heck of a job of taking care of the basketball against a defensive oriented final line club. And Mike, isn't that an unusual statistic uh, against the, the defensive oriented uh, Cardinals for the opposition to only have five turnovers? So yeah, they did a heck of a job tonight. Uh, the, the Cardinal press was not as effective, I don't imagine, as Dick Tino would have liked to do. But take a look at some of the leading scorers here uh, in the basketball game. First of all, for the uh, Fond du Lac Cardinals, led out here tonight by Adam Zakas, he had 28. Eric Rams and Joe Harmson, both with 19 apiece. and. Uh, Brad Bester with 11. Adam Sakas had, uh, let me think here, 17 points in the fourth quarter of action. 13 of that from the free throw line. He hit 13 free throws. 11 points uh, for Brad Bester. As I said, five points for Shayna Laughlin, including a very big tray in the third quarter. Um, two for Rocky Brown out here tonight to lead the way for Fond du Lac. On the other side of the coin, for the Nina Rockets this evening, they were led by Kurt Kramer with 19 points in the basketball game. Ryan Eklund uh, 
probably played, what, about maybe a third of the ball game tonight. The rest of the time he played it on the bench. Was in foul trouble longer than not. And Eklund finished with 14 points. Uh, when he went out, it was a, a real, real struggle for the Nita Rockets from that point on. They, they really seemed to lack a lot of continuity when he was not on the court. And the, the major reason being that their go-to guy was him. And when he's not around, I, don't, I just don't think they function as well. 12 points for Jason Calloway and 12 points for Jed Miller for the Nina Rockets. So the final act Cardinals are now 18-0 on the season, and they are 14-0 in the Fox Valley Association. They have won the conference championship outright and uh, will not share this thing with anybody this year. And now the two games remaining, and the task at hand to, would be uh, whether the Cardinals could go undefeated on the regular season. Well, I, uh, I, it, certainly in my current recollection, and uh, as long as I have been around uh, Cardinal basketball, which is quite some time now, there has never been an undefeated uh, regular season by a Cardinal basketball team. And I'm not so sure, uh, in, at least in recent history, there has not been. And I'm not so sure that there has ever been really a, uh, an undefeated team. I'd have to go back and and look at the state Such championship gap. things there. Maybe there were uh, a couple way, 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 way back. 86 to 75 once again is our final score here this evening as the final act Cardinals defeat the Nina Rockets. Now I want to remind you that we're going to have some uh, high school hockey action coming your way here on Saturday evening as the final act Cardinals will play host to the Cardinals of Middleton. Final act by the way a 10-3 winner this afternoon over McFarland and that's an 8 p.m. Uh, face-off time. We'll have the replay for you at 10:30 here on Cable 21. Then on Monday night, St. Mary Springs travels up to Menasha and the Menasha High School Fieldhouse. They'll take on the St. Mary Zephyrs there in what could be a key Fox Valley Christian Conference game. And uh, that, that, that tip off up there at 745. We'll have the replay for you at about 1030 on Monday night. Thanks tonight going out to my star sports crew and they include our technical staff Outside of the van tonight has been Nancy Marco, also with all the electronic graphics. Jeff Gerner in Cablevision is our technician. Our two camera guys up top side, big Ralphie Pop. And courtside has been Phil Telly O'Neill. Mike Pfeiffer, the stats, statistics, color commentary on the basketball game out here tonight. For Mike and the rest of the Star Sports crew, I'm Dave Preston, wishing each and every one of you a very pleasant good night, reminding you that this has been a Star Sports presentation. Thanks for viewing us here on your station for Cardinal Hoops Cable 21.